Hello everyone, I'm Lori Gonzalez with this Sunday morning teaching. I love the Word of God and the life and the blessings that it produces. His Word reveals to us who God is and how we should live. The Bible is an abundant treasure of revelation of who God is. From Genesis to Revelation is the ongoing continual story of the one true God in pursuit of us with His great love. His desire is to be close to us. In the beginning in the garden, we immediately see that God met with Adam and Eve. After they gave in to temptation and ate the forbidden fruit, God revealed His plan that there would be a descendant of Eve that would crush the head of the adversary while being wounded himself. Their fall separated them from God, and they hid themselves, but God had a plan to bring them back, and He covered their nakedness. What I wanted to share this morning is the holiness of God. What does it mean to be holy? He is a holy God. It means that He is not like us or anything else. Nothing compares to the uniqueness of God and all His attributes. He is separate and one of a kind. He is worthy of all of our devotion. Sin cannot be in His presence. He is pure and impurity cannot come near Him. He is so holy and pure that He is also dangerous. He's dangerous not because He's bad, but because He is so good and pure, and we are not pure. That's why sacrifices had to be made. Hebrews 9.22 says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Because of His great love for us and His desire to be close to us, He gave us His Word and He gave us His instructions, and He had a plan all along from the beginning that one day His Son would be the ultimate sacrifice once and for all so that His blood would cover over all of our impurities so that we may be brought close to Him. In Ephesians 5, 25 through 27, it tells us that His instructions, His Word, washes us as we prepare to meet Christ the Messiah. He is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle, and His Word washes us. His Word instructs us to change how we live. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24 says, As the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. In Ephesians 5, 1 through 21, His word tells us to be imitators of God. God does not change. His instructions do not change. Man may change, but what God has determined to be good or to be evil does not change. He is not a man. He is holy. and He instructs us to be holy. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter 1, 15-16. How we live truly does matter. It matters in our relationship with God and it matters for everyone we come in contact with. Our knowledge of God and what is required to be near Him should drive us to share the good news of what Christ and the shedding of His blood means for all who believe. And once we are counted among those who believe, how we live continues to matter. Hebrews 10, 26 through 31 says, for if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose Will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing, and insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. We are not perfect but we strive for perfection in our efforts to imitate Him. 
when we study his word, we see his character and know that he cannot go against his very nature. This gives us assurance because we know there is a chance for fallen man. It should cause us to run with this great message of the gospel that God has made a way for us to be close to him. And I'll conclude with this scripture from Proverbs 1130. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he who is wise wins souls. May you live a holy, righteous life before God. May the fruit you bear bring life to those around you. And may you win souls so that they too may draw close to God. God bless you and God keep you.